So welcome back to Health Dialogue by BDMS. Now is EP or episode 26. And today we're gonna observe and listen to very informative information from the, from the expert about detox and how to sustain good health with modern medicine by gastroenterologist. Let's meet our guest today, Nico Bawata, Nursing and Program Director, Tanyapura Morgan Quinshot, Nutrition Manager, Tanyapura, and Dr. Jurasit Tawanbu, GI Specialist from Bangkok Hospital, Phuket. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us here. We're delighted to be joining you together, Dr. Jurisit uh, at uh, Bangkok Hospital Phuket. Myself and Morgan, we're, we're more than happy to be here to share with you and your audience about detox, because I think detox is something that's become a little bit trendy and uh, people are, are really thinking about how they can do a detox. And we meet a lot of our guests in Tanyapura that come to us because they want to do a detox. And we can do that. We, we're, we have a lot of great programs at Tanya Pura to help people to gain better health. But we have to understand that detox isn't necessarily something that we have to do. It's something we're doing all the time. And so we would really like to hear more from Dr. Jirasit about uh, the role of our body in detox, how it works. We, we're constantly detoxing through our lungs, our liver, our kidneys, our skin. But we want to know more about the role of the liver because it's the largest detox organ in our body. And so we want to know what, what can we do to have better liver health? What are some of the things that uh, affect the liver? And, uh, and is there any tests that we can do that can show about the, the health of the liver? Okay, first of all, we will talk about the function of liver because uh, liver is the biggest organ of the body. It, uh, body weight is uh, it about three kilo. Main function of uh, liver is uh, for produce albumin protein, Cutting protein and uh, control metabolism of uh, carbohydrate, mm -hmm. amino acid, and control about infection mm -hmm. that came to the body. Because main pro, uh, blood flow from body have to pass to the liver, uh, and also uh, liver is an organ that have natural detoxification enzyme mm -hmm. by natural such as. Uh, vitamin E, vitamin C have to work that here and uh, about uh, glutathione or beta carotene have to work together with another thing in liver cell for detoxify uh, toxic substance or su organic substance that come to the liver. And also liver also have to uh, control, uh, accumulate about ion, mm -hmm. copper, uh, some substance a good substance that have to use for metabolism of the of the body mm -hmm. and yeah when anyway if uh, this uh added by that or bacteria come to the body to the bloodstream uh, normally uh, in liver have the uh, white cell that work detoxify and cure this organism that is not normal for body Anyway, when this lot of balance can cause, and also if this not balance can cause uh, our body have problem, mm -hmm. get too much toxin or some substance that not good for liver or for another organ. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I will talk about uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver. Mm -hmm. It means that you have over fatty acid or triglyceride that accumulate in liver cell. These are toxic to the liver when have too much fatty acid or triglyceride or another kind of fat also toxic it stimulate uh, oxidation mm -hmm. and due many stress to the liver cell and body have response have white cell to cytokine many things that come to the liver cell for uh, attack a liver cell that cause have problem about uh, fibrosis or inflammation and then develop uh, cellulosic letter. Mm -hmm. Also, alcohol, as we know that you know, alcohol, uh, if, if we drink too much, uh, in moderate, uh, more than uh, normal standard, uh, more than one, one drink or two drink per day, it can affect about liver cell because it change to fatty acid uh, deficit in liver. And liver cell or body have uh, resistance to this mm -hmm. fatty acid and develop uh, fibrosis or inflammation of liver. 
And now uh, we have a machine that can detect uh, about fatty liver status and cirrhosis that uh, damage from fatty liver. We call fibro scan. Fibro scan is look like ultrasound equipment, but it can detect uh, how much about fat in liver and how any uh, cirrhosis or fibrosis or damage from fat or not on that time. It's easy equipment for detect a status of liver. It's about five, 10 minutes that have to fighting about uh, three hours for do uh, fibro scan. It's not hurt, it's not, it not electrical shock wave. It look like ultrasound wave. And, and then we will know exactly uh, for the result of fatty liver and any fibrosis cellulosis or not that mm. uh, the effect from fatty liver. Long term. How, how would someone know if they need to have a fiber scan? What are the indications? Is it only when you see liver enzymes that are elevated, or is it there a certain age group or somebody that should have a fiber scan? Normally, everyone even need to check the that can do, but uh, can do it because in a don't look like I know check up. Mm. But uh, especially some care that obesity, overweight, or drink alcohol, have chronic liver disease, hepatitis, hepatitis C, should do this equipment annually. For monitor and for up uh, progression of liver status, yes. And then you can make some recommendations about things that they can do in their lifestyle. If there's some level of sclerosis, there's a scarring that you see even that yeah. fibro scan. You would yeah. make some recommendations for yeah, them yeah, about yeah. how to change things yeah, in their yeah. lifestyle. Yes. Probably number one being to avoid alcohol, yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned uh, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver. And um, and that will be related mostly to the lifestyle, right? And yeah. mainly the diet. Yeah. So as a dietitian, I see a lot of patients that uh, we can see on their blood test as well, like high triglycerides or high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time, if it's linked with obesity, I can uh, I can think of uh, fatty liver, right? And I will always advise them to avoid certain type of food because they can be high in toxins. And if we if we know that one of the first rules actually to avoid toxins, right? Under if we want to if we mention detox, first rule is avoid intoxicating. So from the food side, I uh, I think it's important to mention alcohol for sure. But then there is all the additives and preservatives in food, right? And in Thailand, but all over the world, we we know that. Um, it can be a long list of additives in the food, in the soil as well, like all the food that we eat, not necessarily just the plant, but also all the animal protein that we get because the animal will eat those plants as well. So they will uh, receive a lot of toxins. Then if we eat that, we also get a lot of toxins in our body. Uh, you get all the GMOs. Uh, there is also all the co colors like dyes in food as well. Uh, what else can we find in food? But the list is so long, I think, in the food. So the main advice that I give to, to our guest is to avoid processed food or at least ultra processed food. Mm -hmm. And most of the time nowadays, because our lifestyle is really, we are always rushing, we don't have time. So there is always a way to go to convenience uh, stores and get food that is ready to eat, mm -hmm. but those food are maybe like in plastic uh, bags that can also get uh, some toxins in our bodies. Uh, so the best is as much as they can go back to homemade food or whole grains full of fibers because that can support the detoxification. So there is a way to first you want to avoid the source, right? And then you want to support your liver basically because the liver is the main detox center. So there are some foods that we know that can help and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that uh, the Elium family, like the, the, the food that smells strong, like garlic, sulfur, uh, even broccoli, they contain, they are uh, garlic and onions, sorry, they are high in sulfur that creates that smell, right? And the sulfur will actually uh, boost uh, the, um, the production of the glutathione enzyme that helps to create the glutathione glutathione that is one of the highest antioxidant in our body so you want to choose like garlic onions all these smelly foods mm. uh, there is also all the dark green veggies right that we find a lot in thailand like bok choy kale uh spinach we find a little less but we do find uh so the dark green veggies 
they contain chlorophyll and chlorophyll will help in uh, blood circulation that also helps in the detox because we need to make everything um, circulating in our bodies um, there is also turmeric turmeric is really uh, famous in ayurveda medicine uh, asian medicine because it we it it's reduced inflammation and it also boosts one of the phase of the detox, which is phase two in our liver. Uh, that phase is when all the toxins that were fat soluble become water soluble. So if we boost that phase, then we create more, um, like it's, it will activate the toxin, uh, the, the detox actually, and we can uh, get rid of those through the sweat as we said before, through our, our urine or through our lungs as well when we breathe in and breathe out. So there are many ways that we can get rid of those toxins, but first we, wanna, uh, we want the liver to be uh, able to detox properly, right? So in the food, there are many, many sources, but the main are the smelly ones, the dark green ones, turmeric, and a corella is also a big one. Corella is one that we advise to our guests that have high heavy metal, uh, especially mercury and lead. Uh, but basically, corella is a seaweed, right? Uh, that can bind those heavy metals. So if we know that there is a high level of heavy metal in our body, uh, we can also recommend to take corella, to have increased corella intake in our diet, uh, so that corella can bind the toxins and then it's going to get easier to get rid of them. So it seems, right. sounds like what we find in all of these foods really yeah. is, is fibers. And this is especially important for the health of the colon, right? The, to have a high fiber diet. I think that this is becoming more uh, the, the focus for people in, in getting a lot of fiber in their diet. So is there a, a certain recommendation that you recommend, uh, Morgan or Dr. Joseph, for fiber intake? And then can you also share with us about the health of the colon? How does fiber affect the health of the colon? And is there a way that we can also see about the health of our colon? Okay. Uh colonic cancer is a quite common problem. Uh, we cannot prevent only in one month, one year, we have to do it in long term. Mm -hmm. If we have knowledge, we should do it now, not wait, mm -hmm. because uh, colonic problem is not only from food, not only from environment, mm -hmm. sometimes we cause from genetic and gene individually. Anyway, uh, that we cannot uh, change, we then cannot correct properly. Uh, only uh, one thing that we can do the best is to have a, how we have to do good lifestyle, good eating, good food. Mm -hmm. uh, we, because mainly, uh, anyway, uh, constipation not cause colonic cancer, mm -hmm. but uh, many factors that affect about colonic cancer. I, I say that not only genetic and gene, I, I, I mean that environment uh, from fatty uh, uh, food, mm -hmm. in, from the food, or toxin, alcohol, smoking uh, can affect about colonic problem and develop colonic cancer in long term. Mm. So normally we uh, recommend uh, eat fiber food because fiber food uh, uh, can absorb water, water in the uh, stool. It looks like stool softener mm. cause uh, have good bowel movement. Normally should have, everyone have to have a good bowel motion about one or three times. Okay. A maximum we accept should not uh, more less than three days. Yes. Mm -hmm. It more, uh, more than three days, nothing come out, it's not good. Mm -hmm. Or one week or more than that is not good. Mm -hmm. Mean that you have to adjust it, uh, the lifestyle, adjust about water, to drink water if no contact indication, mm -hmm. no kidney problem, no heart problem, to drink water two or three liters per day. It, mm -hmm. Uh, eat fiber food uh, every day and with our pesticide, uh, with our chemical, have to choose fiber food that not contaminated with insecticide chemical. Yes. And when did you, we have to do every day from now, from teenage or from uh, uh, 70, 30 year old, when everyone at nearly 50 year old should do colonic cancer surveillance, mm -hmm. mainly maybe start with stool exam, check uh, stool exam first, any blood, any abnormality, but definitely should do colonoscopy for surveillance when it's more than 50 year old mm -hmm. for surveillance because it can, we can have quality, 
mm. in the colon that can develop to cancer in the future because colonic cancer usually develop from polyp mm. polyp that uh, interaction with gene genetic and environment mm. from food fatty food satellite uh, 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 fatty acid or fatty food or uh, alcohol smoking mm. Mm. in long term that and maybe uh, the gene and MLN work together and they get it hard to develop colonic polyp and then colonic cancer. Mm -hmm. So everyone that do now have a good bowel movement, eat healthy food, high fiber food, drink a lot of water, have a good bowel motion, try to avoid alcohol, smoking, mm -hmm. uh, or chemical substance, and do colonic surveillance when it's more than 50 years old. And then maybe five or ten years later, up to uh, uh, fighting on first time. If, if they ha they have a lot of polyp, maybe have to do one year later. If less, maybe three or five years. Mm -hmm. yes. It's yeah. it's really common, you know. I'd say the majority of the guests that we see are dealing with some sort of. Uh, gut symptoms, some sort of gut issue, and it can be just little things, you know, just from maybe bloating and, and gas, you know, I, I think some of that can be quite, pretty normal depending on, you know, if you're chewing enough and these types of things, yeah. you know, we recommend good uh, eating habits, of course, how you have your food. But again, these little things along the way can be early indication that get, there can be a larger problem. So it's good to, to have a test to see if there's something unusual going on. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's other toxins that we really need to consider uh, when we talk about detox too, because there's a lot of things that are in our environment that are really hard to avoid. And like Morgan said before, the first rule to detox is stop intoxicating. So we need to be really careful about where are some of these toxins in our lifestyle coming from. And some examples of these can be things like plastics. We, we maybe don't realize when we drink out of plastic bottles or we're heating in plastics. I see a lot of uh, people with soup and, and plastic bags here, and this can uh, create a disruption in our hormones because it can have a lot of BPA and BPA can mimic estrogen in our body. So it can alter our hormones. Uh, and the other ones that we see are maybe found in, in pollution, you know, so we see sometimes high things like high heavy metals from people that are exposed to um, a lot of when they were riding a, a motorbike, we're wearing masks now more often. Yes. So that's good. But having some protection from from our having good ventilation, for example, can help with the other types of toxins that can be, um, you know, just found in our environment. So uh, we we really pay attention closely to to try to avoid some of these things. Heavy metals being one of the most common ones, as Morgan mentioned, we see heavy metals in everyone. They're they're normal. We we get them from our moms, uh, so we're born with them, but they accumulate as we age. And when we accumulate them in our body, the problem is that they sit on the receptor where our minerals should go. And so when we test heavy metals, uh, we, we see often that we find, you know, we would say normal amounts of heavy metals. Like I said, everyone usually has them, but we see low minerals. And the other thing that happens is that the absorption can be low in the gut, right? Because uh, maybe there's some inflammatory process that's happening in the gut. So we don't absorb even sometimes if we're making good efforts to, you know, eat a good variety of foods or even take supplements. And the other thing is that our soils are just depleted uh, from the use of pesticides. So there's a lot of chemicals in the food. So we recommend trying to choose organic foods when you can, um, increasing, you know, the amount of, um, you know, fibers that you're having in your diet and, and continue to have those fibers. A lot of people think, oh, if there's pesticides, then I shouldn't be having the, the foods that are grown in the soil. But the opposite is true. Uh, we have to remember that just like we accumulate these toxins in our tissues, animals do too. So when the animal's eating from the ground, they're also eating the pesticides and the chemicals too. So it's accumulating in their tissues. And we know that even having a diet that's high in animal proteins yeah. is another risk factor for colon cancer, right? So we want to encourage you to have more, um, more fibers in, in your diet. Yes, and in addition to that, now we mentioned like uh, some of the lifestyle choices that we can do to prevent certain type of uh, disease, but also to to kind of um, enhance our detox or support our detox. So there is the food that we mentioned, avoiding alcohol, avoiding smoking, but there are all, all, uh, other lifestyle choices that we can do to do a everyday detox, to everyday boost our detox organs, right? So if we think about the lungs, the lungs is gonna get rid of the toxins through the air. So breathing it, breathe, uh, breathe in, breathe out is 
really needed. Some, most of the time we don't really realize what we do, but we really need to maybe do a breathing exercise through a yoga called like pranayama exercise or a more a meditation breathing exercise can help. But then again, breathing can come also from moving and movement is really, really important, especially when we talk about bowel movement. If we don't move enough, hydration is important, but moving is really, really important. That's why we recommend like 30 minutes uh, minimum per day of just walking, for example, it's already like, but being active is important. If you think about it, the toxins, if we don't move, the toxins will stay stuck, kind of stuck in our body. So you wanna get them moving. So moving is important. And also studies show that sports can by itself increase the glutathione levels in our body as well. So moving, breathing, and then when you think about your skin, which is, uh, one of our biggest organ, the skin will absorb many, many toxins, but then you can get rid of many also if you sweat by sports, but also by when you do sports, avoid aircon or to being in a too cold environment, otherwise you won't sweat enough. Maybe using infrared sauna, we have an infrared sauna at Tanya Pura, so we advise to some of our guests to do that. Uh, then having a regular bowel movement with a good hydration, enough fibers in your diet is important. And I think I, I said the most important thing, but moving, breathing, drinking water and not alcohol is the most important. Um, and uh, before inviting uh, Ying again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Jirasit, for sharing your knowledge, knowledge with us today and inviting us. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> So welcome Kunying. So I'm glad to be back here again. <laughs> so I enjoy watching and uh, listening to the information that you share with us and also Dr. Zirusit. I'm glad that uh, he come and share information. So, <laughs> so very <Kun> excited. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you're very exciting. And us too, we want to introduce you to Kunying. Uh, she's a 51 year old woman who came to us at Tanya Pura because she would like to change her lifestyle to, um, to actually get like optimize her health, right? Yeah. So, uh, Kunin, you came to us and you decided to do some few tests, right? Yes. Um, actually, I'm here sitting and running the program, and I think to to run the the health program, and I should be the one who also have chance to to be healthy too. And uh, since we met, I think the information from from you guys very interesting, and I think why not? And uh, Tanyapura is. I mean, your name also guarantee a lot of things. So I've been there, I've been there. And I'm glad that I'd be there on that day. Yeah, a lot of information I got from yeah. you and a lot of inspiration. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so okay. Kuyin came to us and she said that her goal is to improve her health and uh, by the first step is to lose weight. She would like to lose weight by the end of March 31st, right? She has a personal goal on that day. So uh, we started with a nutrition and lifestyle assessment and from the nutrition assessment, uh, if I can share a few, from the body composition analysis we did, we could see more than just her body weight because the body weight is not a lot of information. What we wanna see is how much fat, how much water you have, how much muscle mass you have, because that's gonna be the main, um, the main thing that helps us to follow your progress, right? So we find out that your fat percentage is pretty high, but mainly the visible fat and today we talked about the visible fat, right? Actually, we can see from far, but I mean, just to confirm everything and I mean, uh, to see the information which we can work on it. And exactly. I think it's a lot of details and oh, it's also surprised me. I just know that I weighed that much, yes. um, 100 plus kilogram lady, but when I know more in detail, I feel like, oh, then, then it's the time because it's kind of, dangerous. I'm living with the bomb inside me, mm -hmm. kind of. 
and yeah then <laughs> i focus on what you said and follow your suggestion i have got a lot of information from these two ladies but i think better let them share <laughs> what they told me because i i cannot remember all the information but i try my best but you're doing all the hard work <laughs> exactly you're all the one doing it yeah we just give you the key and you're the driver yeah okay? <laughs> i'm the driver so should i say the result or should you share the process Let's mm -hmm. talk about the process. Yes. Yeah, because okay. for our Tanya Perth yeah. 360 health yeah. checkup, uh, we always start by having a lifestyle assessment. We yeah. really want to understand more about you. We need to know how are you sleeping? Are you having stress? Are yeah. you having alcohol? And you know things that we know are toxins. Mm -hmm. Do we check uh, heavy metal levels? We do a nutrition assessment, yeah. a fitness assessment, mm -hmm. and we also perform a bio scan that uh, can tell us a little bit more information about the systems in your body. Is there any early risk that we can detect that we need to pay attention a little bit closer to. So we perform these tests for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll hand it over to Morgan. We'll talk about the nutrition for Sam. So from the nutrition assessment, what we what we will uh, take you out. Interview me <laughs> and you got the information from me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mainly your lifestyle is really like you are uh, in a rush most of the time and pretty stressed and your diet is not as balanced as it used to be mm. and uh, as before working here you were working in another type of environment where you were drinking more alcohol as well so when we see the body composition and when i ask you the questions everything makes sense and mm -hmm. everything is related so now the first and mm -hmm. i started we started with few steps that you can change mm -hmm. in your lifestyle mm -hmm. so uh, besides of moving more because that's going to be the fitness assessment uh there were a few things in the diet first we said no alcohol yes right and i did it the whole week without a few even a drop without <laughs> yes. a drop of that's alcohol. amazing <laughs> so no alcohol no sugar and where do we find the sugar? It's not necessarily in the canom. It mm. could be in all the processed food and mm. pre-prepared food that we find in those convenience stores that mm -hmm. we are in a rush, we go home, we are tired, we don't want to cook. So we said no, no more, or at least reduce and limit those processed food. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that there is a place that you can order food that is yes. homemade and clean, as they uh, say. I have a lot of good friends and now they are like professional. Yes. A chef and they, they cook kind of clean food. Yes. And very healthy one. So I focus on them. Sometimes I order not just one box a day, but two boxes a day. Yeah. So then I don't have to worry about what am I going to eat and if I'm uh, too hungry and I will stop and grab something on the roadside again. Yes. So it's normally fast, but it stay very long on yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> and talking about the street, the, the food that we can find on the road, yes. there were this coffee that you usually stop by ice, and you take coffee, right? Ice what coffee. Ice, ice coffee. Yes. I love it so much. Maybe not just one, but two ice coffee per day. Mm -hmm. And I think I load sugar into mm -hmm. my body. Yes, exactly. And now yeah. I, as you suggest, I switched to black coffee. Was it easy? Um, not easy, mm -hmm. but my aim and my focus is end of March. Yeah. So I, I want to, to be better and uh, healthier for someone special. Okay. <laughs> and you, and as, as we tell you, it's like step by step. Mm -hmm. And especially when you stop sugar in your diet, for example, you feel that nothing is tasty anymore. But you need to understand that the taste buds that you mm -hmm. have can change within 15 days. So mm -hmm. it's hard at the beginning, but after 15 days, you won't be able to drink that coffee anymore. Okay, <laughs> sweet one. Okay. So yeah, yeah, so that was the main um, the main uh, uh -huh. topics of yeah. our nutrition consultation. And also, uh, besides nutrition that yeah. I have to change, I also go to bed earlier, sleep a little bit longer. And that's yes. from, that's from the lifestyle assessment. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's good to to be there at Tanyapura because it's the place that we should go there when we like still healthy yeah. and designed to live healthy. Yeah, yeah. We 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 just don't think about. I I wish for for mm -hmm. Chinese New Year. I want to live long and as long as possible, but not on the bed. 
Yeah. <laughs> Living yeah. long but healthy life. That's right. And we okay. want to meet you where you're at, you know, yeah. because we understand that you can't just quit working and, and you know, <laughs> change your lifestyle overnight. So no. we have to find ways that we can work with you. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, in the fitness, you know, Jay performed yes. a fitness assessment <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had some great recommendations for you to work some fitness into your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we talked yesterday when you came in to uh, <laughs> check up with us again yes. about um, you like to watch TV shows in the night and yeah. so we and you have a, a treadmill that you yes. can have so we talked about yeah. doing some walking while yes. you're watching your your first episode yes. <laughs> but also <laughs> on the weekends we would love to see you in Tanya Paramore uh Jay noticed that your your core body strength you know your, your your muscle strength was just a little bit low so we want to build up your muscle in your yes. body and a lot of women are scared of this they yes. uh -huh. they worry about putting muscle in their body they think I'm going to end up looking like a bodybuilder but you won't <laughs> uh, but it's important for us to have good muscle mass on our body because that revs up our metabolism it increases our insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. and now there's so many studies showing that it increases longevity so there's oh, so yeah. many reasons to, to yeah. pick up the weights you know but we'll do it slowly step by step you know but we hope to see you in yeah in I'll, I'll, I'll go there for sure <laughs> see you jay <laughs>